Hi, I'm Christina Kirby, and our group project will focus on the muscular system. Today, I'm going to start out our project by talking about the different functions of the muscular system. One function would be movement, the ability to lift, run, walk. Uh, another function would be posture. It, uh, the muscular system is responsible for our ability to sit up and to stand. Uh, another function that the muscular system is responsible for is support of our internal organs. Uh, another function would be that uh, the muscular system also, through the use of contractions against veins within our body, uh, is the movement of blood. It also generates heat throughout our body by using these muscles. Uh, characteristics of our, the muscular system include that the muscles are excitable, which means that they respond to stimuli. Uh, they're also contractible, which means that they can shorten. They're extendable, which means that they can actually reach out. Um, they're also elastic, which means that they can actually come back to their original shape uh, whenever they are used to be extended or contracted. It's also important to note that these muscles, majority of them, are voluntary. There are a few exceptions, such as uh, the cardiac muscle, involuntary. There are several common diseases that affect the muscular system that most people have heard of, but they affect the muscular system in different ways. Um, anything from just a slight discomfort and irritation um, all the way up to paralysis. Some of these include cerebral palsy, MS, MD, and Lou Gehrig's disease. Well, from here, I'm going to turn the rest of the presentation over to our classmates. Thank you very much. Action Potential When the cell is at rest, its resting membrane potential is at about negative 70 millivolts. A stimulus upgraded potential summating to reach the threshold of negative 50 millivolts occurs to open the sodium voltage gated channel. To allow sodium into the cell to make the cell positive 40 millivolts to create an action potential. The cell is now depolarized to positive 40 millivolts. The synapse. The action potential travels along the axon to the axon terminal to activate secretion of acetylcholine. Vesicles are filled with a acetylcholine and fused to the membrane of the presynaptic neuron. The vesicles open up to release acetylcholine to transfer to the synaptic, synaptic cleft. Acetylcholine binds to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. The action potential is then transmitted to the muscle fiber. Sliding filament theory. The action potential travels along the plasma membrane. The impulse travels down the two tubules. Calcium is released into the sarcoplasm from lateral sacs of the sarcoplasmic reticulum due to an electrical charge. At rest, trobomyosin covers the myosin binding sites on the actin to prevent the binding of the myosin heads. Calcium binds to the troponin C on the actin which moves the tropomyosin off the binding sites.
The myosin heads attach to the myosin binding sites on the actin, creating a cross bridge. ATP attaches to the binding sites for ATP on myosin to create the energy for the power stroke. Myosin heads flick the actin over the myosin. The myosin heads tilt, break away from the binding site, return to the original position only to attach to another binding site further along. Actin gets pulled over myosin, which shortens the Z-disc, which shortens the muscles for contraction to occur. Muscle relaxation. Once the calcium is no longer available to be released, the calcium is pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum to be stored. Then the tropomyosin returns to the myosin binding sites. The sodium voltage gated channels close. Potassium voltage gated channels open to release potassium out of the cells. The cell begins to repolarize, going into hyperpolarization. The potassium voltage gate gated channels close, bringing the cells back to rest. Most muscles work in pairs or groups. Antagonistic muscles are when movement of one pair of muscles and one of them contracts while the other relaxes. An example is a contracting bicep, it causes the arm to flex and bend at the elbow, but contracting the tricep causes the arm to extend and straighten at the elbow. Synergistic muscles are muscles that contract at the same time to cause a certain movement. Um, these muscles tend to assist with movement or stabilize joints or limbs. Slow twitch, excuse me, summation is sustained contractions that begin when the frequency of stimulus increase. If a second stimulus is given before the muscle is fully relaxed, the second twitch will be stronger than the first. This phenomenon is described as summation because the second contraction is added to the first. In other words, an increased number of muscle cells are stimulated to contract. Tetanus is when stimuli arrive even more frequently. The contraction becomes increasingly stronger as each new muscle twitch is added. If the stimuli occur so frequently that there is no time for any relaxation before the next stimulus arrives, the muscle goes into a sustained, powerful contraction called tetanus. That means that there are no rests between the stimuli. Slow twitch muscles, <clears throat> slow twitch muscle cells contract slowly when stimulated, but with enormous endurance. They contain abundant mitochondria for ATP production. They have a lot of Capillaries are packed with oxygen binding pigment. <clears throat> they are specialized to deliver prolonged, strong contractions with great endurance. You're going to contract slowly, and some examples would be your abdominal muscles and your neck. Fast twitch muscles, on the other hand, contract rapidly and powerfully, but with far less endurance. It depends on more, <clears throat> excuse me, on anaerobic meta metabolic pathways of producing ATP, so they tire quickly. They're going to be rapid, powerful responses that contract rapidly. More actin and myosin for short, powerful contractions. And examples of these would be your legs and your arms.